Hello. Today we're going to be talking about proper safety protocols for working in a fume hood in a scientific laboratory. Fume hoods, such as the one beside me, are semi-enclosed workspaces often found in scientific laboratories, where inside of them air circulation is maintained such that vapors produced inside the fume hood do not spill outside, as this may present a risk to researchers. The ones generally found in Bob Wright are high-performance fume hoods, which can be identified by their horizontal sashes. The two main features of a fume hood that ensure proper air circulation are the front sash and the rear back damper. To ensure that air circulation is adequate, it is imperative that all objects placed inside the fume hood are at least 15 centimeters from the front sash and the back damper. So you wanna maintain everything in the central zone. Additionally, it is important to think about what objects are being placed inside of the fume hood. Very bulky objects may, be, uh, may disturb circulation and should therefore be raised. Here we have a fairly cluttered fume hood. If we were to perform a smoke test on this, we would see that air circulation does not go directly into the rear exhaust system and there is quite a bit of turbulence within the fume hood itself as can be seen around these bottles. Now we have a more organized fume hood with bulky objects placed on platforms to help with circulation. We also have sashes closed to assist with the face velocity or the downward motion of air through the fume hood. When we perform the smoke test, we see that the smoke moves directly to the rear exhaust system with minimal turbulence. Humans here at UVic are tested annually for their effectiveness, and that is shown by this certificate. On that certificate, you get a date of validation and a date for the next inspection. When humans are validated, they are indicated with a maximum sash height shown by this arrow. Maximum sash heights are important because the height of the sash impacts the effectiveness of the inward flow of air or the capturing velocity and this relates to how well the fume hood controls fumes on the inside of the enclosure. The way to visually test this is to conduct smoke tests like the ones we showed earlier in the video, or to use a visual indication which is often in the form of a ribbon taped to the bottom of the sash. If this is present in your fume hood, the ribbon should be oriented away from you and into the fume hood to show the direction of flow. In more modern fume hoods, such as here in Bob Wright, we get digital read readouts which have the face velocity shown in FPM or feet per minute. An important note to consider about the effectiveness of circulation is that the researcher themselves can impact turbulence. If you move too quickly in the environment, whether that be by raising or lowering the sash height too quickly, moving instruments abruptly, or even walking too quickly in the vicinity of the fume hood, when the sash is open or high, you could introduce turbulence which will lead to vapors spilling over the edge. Another note is to think about the environment. If there is an open window, in this case we don't have one, or a fan, that can also introduce turbulence which will allow vapors to spill over the edge. As you may have heard in the last shot, when I was discussing the impact of researchers on the airflow, there was beeping present when I raised the sash height too high. This beeping occurs when the airflow drops significantly. Here we have a face velocity of the fume hood that is too low for proper containment of fumes within the hood. Fume hoods are intended for researchers to conduct experiments in a protected environment so that vapors do not spill over the edge. They are not intended for chemical storage. It is inappropriate to use a fume hood for long-term chemical storage and instead safety cabinets such as the ones below a fume hood are appropriate. Additionally, it is inappropriate to use a fume hood as a waste disposal tool for volatile reagents as these fumes will enter the atmosphere untreated which is dangerous. If a fume hood is used for overnight reactions, it is needed that an overnight reaction sheet is filled out with your name your contact number, your supervisor, and all hazards listed with WIMIS terminology. Some final safety considerations for fume hoods are that one, radioisotopes need to be used in their own designated fume hoods. Same goes for perchloric acids, which needs to have a fume hood with capable washdown. 
abilities. We also need to have biohazardous materials handled in their own safety cabinets. Another consideration is the type of equipment being used in the fume hood with respect to the experiment that is ongoing. We do not want unapproved electrical equipment or ignition sources in the fume hood when there are flammable vapors present. In case of an emergency and or a power outage, it is important that a researcher takes the necessary steps to prevent a buildup of vapors, as the efficiency of the fume hood may have become compromised due to the power outage. So, all chemicals should be covered so that vapor buildup is stopped. The reaction that was ongoing at the time of the power outage should be secured as effectively as possible. And the fume hood sash should be lowered all the way to the bottom and the horizontal sashes should be closed. For more information on fume hood safety, please refer to the UVic Occupational Health, Safety and Environment webpage and the associated links on that webpage. Thank you.